This is a, a burglary and surface transition scenario set up by Kent Stewart uh, and run by Marvin Carter. Uh, there's no flags. This is a single blind trail set in a semi-urban environment in Hollywood, South Carolina. This is a burglary scenario where the uh, suspect contacted the door and because of the hand odor, the dog's just naturally gravitating to it. You can see how the dog wants to go and check it. As a matter of fact, we'll come back and check it again right here. This is because it's a concentration of odor that's stronger than the trail odor. The dog has odor all across this deck of the person that it's looking for, but it needs to find an exit trail. You can see that heads up looking through the gate there, and it appears that the dog detected something. Watch when it hits the trail hard. You're going to see a big change in body language. Nose down tail in a good trailing posture and here we have a sudden surge in direction of travel. It's going to change as soon as you go around the corner coming up here. Okay, we still have some great trail going on here but a little change is going to take place right here. All of a sudden the dog's going to get sucked into this driveway probably because of subject odor but look at the head come up and the tail drop. That's probably distraction odor of another animal, perhaps a cat or another dog. It takes a minute for the dog to reacquire. That slight distraction changed things for a little bit, so it takes a patient handler to try to figure this out. Let's see if we can find where the dog picks up the odor again. Obviously, it's following something. It detects something here, some blown odor, perhaps something right here. It's not an exact trail, but it's definitely some odor, and it ends right up here on top of the railroad tracks. This was hunting behavior, but it was based on some wind-blown odor. The dog went up to the railroad tracks for a reason. It wasn't a track, it wasn't the exact trail, but there was odor up there. And you're going to see later it was due to what we call the apex of the turn. The turn is actually going to be here where the dog's going back to, where it collects the track once more. Okay, now this is trail odor that's actually blown. And uh, notice how the dog is actually moving forward. It uh, looks like it has something. This is some pretty good body language, but this casting to the left and to the right tells me that it's not a solid direction of travel. Now the head comes up and the tail drops. Probably nothing there, so the dog's coming back. This is more than likely a surface change and perhaps a change in direction of travel. The dog has odor, follows it all the way to the end. Nothing really here. Tries to go a little bit further. Probably has some odor, but it's just not strong. Comes out into the road trying to find the trail. Looking over here, Nothing much. This is a visual on that little piece of paper right there. The dog doesn't necessarily have anything quite yet. Nothing here, but it looks like the dog's detecting something to the right. I don't know what it is, but more than likely that's where the trail is. We probably had a road crossing going across the road to that little section right there. The problem with this section is that um, you have blown wind odor that's going to be on the soft surface going with the road. But obviously we have a road crossing that went off on a right angle somewhere back here. The dog's showing a negative and also showing it has bits and pieces of odor that went probably down the path of the grass along the road, usually due to windblown traffic odor. Um, so here the dog's going to try to pick it up again, and you're going to actually see some pretty good crossing behavior right here. This is because the dog's slowing down takes its time a little harder, goes across the street, and you can see better body language at this street crossing. You'll see exactly where the road crossing took place, and you're going to also see where the path goes up the side of the hill. Now this is much better body language right here. It's definitely more committed, and the only way I can explain it is there's much more intensity and much more purpose with the dog's nose. You can see where you get a little tail wag right there. That's a strong indication that the dog's just reacquired the track. Now it's going up over the gravel, and the gravel is not going to hold odor quite like grass does, so it's going to be a little bit more meticulous dog, especially if he doesn't have a clear direction to travel. Patience is a virtue here because the dog's got hard odor. It's nice and strong. It's just not a clear path. That's because it's gravel and it's also baking in the sun. But you can see here the dog's picking up probably the strong points right exactly uh, where the, the scent is laid, but perhaps not exactly where the track was. So the dog comes back, reacquires, and then continues to follow odor. This is looking a little bit better right here. Look at this, big change, big, big change. This is stronger odor and it's telling you that you have a bracket. This is the extent of the odor traveling down the tracks that way and then coming back, you're gonna see the extent of it coming here. Now look at this little tail wag again. This might be the actual path where the person walked. 
Patience is a virtue. Don't push the dog and take your time. Once you get on the grass, it's golden.